Good evening to everyone. First, I want to say that our prayers are with Am Yisrael at this time. Not everyone has the zchut to sit comfortably in a shul and listen to about a great man because they're running from shelter to shelter. So our tefillot are with them. And uh, I hope that HaKadosh Baruch Hu hears our tefillot and, uh, and helps save the situation. So, Buchim Abayim, to all of those who have never been here, Birshut Mishpachat Libler, Naomi, and the entire Libler clan, uh, we are celebrating the Shloshim of Izzy Libler. In Tehilim, Perek Pei Bet, Pasuk Vav and Zayn, it says, Ani amarti Elohim, Atem uvnei elyon kulchem. I said, you are gods. All of you are children of the Almighty. Originally, we had the potential to live forever. When we were first created, we were not designed to die. According to the Ramchal, in Derech Hashem, Chelek Aleph, Perek Gimel, our neshamot were supposed to be so powerful and they were supposed to purify and elevate our bodies to the state where they can live on for eternity. But the continuation of the Pasuk in Tehillim that I just read continues differently. Achen ke'adam temutun uchachad hasarim tipolu. Indeed, you will die. Die like mortals. Your life will end like that of any prince. After chet adam harishon and chava, after eating the forbidden fruit, humans became mortal. Our neshamot no longer had the strength or potency or spiritually to elevate our bodies so that it can live forever. Our bodies became weak and they were stamped with an expiration date of up to 120 years. And that is why there's a separation between body and soul when we pass away from this world. Our bodies perish. They're weak. They weren't given the strength of our neshama. But our neshama, our neshama lives on. Rabbi Chia, quoted in the Zohar, in Parashat Bereshit, on the words, Vatipakachna enei shenehem, vayeidu ki erumim hem, and the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. Rabbi Chia says, Nifkechu ladaat et haraot sheba'olam. Their eyes were opened to the evils of the world. They saw the bad that they could not see before. And at that point, Adam and Chava realized that they were naked. They understood that they had lost the supreme divine shimmer that protected them before the chet. <coughs> and after that moment, our jobs in this world changed completely. It's true that our lives today attain meaning when we connect to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And that bond is part of the ultimate goal. However, another extremely important part of our lives is atoning for the original sin of Adam HaRishon. It is our role as people to spiritually uplift human nature. We have a responsibility to make this world a better place and return it 
the way it was meant to be. When I received from you Izzy's book, and I read the title, Lone Voice, The Wars of Izzy Liebler, I heard the echo of a famous midrash in Kohelet, Parasha Zayin. Hen v'chol ma shebarati bishvilcha barati. Ten da'atcha shelo tekalkel v'tachriv et olami. She'im kilkalta, en mi she'itaken acharecha. Everything I created, I created for you. Let your mind and actions not spoil not destroy my world, for if you ruin it, there is no one to fix it after you. Izzy Liebler did his part. He fixed the world the Izzy Liebler way. And it is from that which we must learn. He was an example for all of us. He did not shy away from the battle, he fought for truth, justice, equity. He tackled serious problems head on. Dedicated his entire life for righting wrongs, demanding honesty, lawfulness, and accountability, even when others didn't. And all why while being a true mensch and a God-fearing Jew. Izzy Liebler truly did what he could to atone for the sins of Adam HaRishon. And Naomi, you were always by his side. And I know that you were his inspiration and his true love. And on behalf of everyone here, we thank you for sharing him with us, with the Jewish world. But there are so many battles yet for us to tackle. We haven't won all the battles. And we all owe it to Izzy Liebler to become more involved and to battle for justice. So although Izzy's body is no longer with us, his neshama lives on. His energy, care, kindness, his desire to cure wrongs of this world truly endure. May we internalize Izzy's mission and make it our own, especially during these difficult days. It is so clear that Izzy is watching over us right next to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, from above, Be'ezrat Hashem, May he continue to be a Melitz Yosher for Am Israel, for his family, for you, Nomi. Tehenishmato tzura betzoror hachayim. It has obviously been a very sad and painful time for me. You need a microphone? All right, I'm sorry. All right. sorry. It has obviously been a very sad and painful time for me, my children, Mark, Alan, and all the family, but also a time of reflection and thankfulness to Hashem that he granted me and Izzy 63 happy, eventful, meaningful years together, blessed with wonderful children, grandchildren and great-grandchildren who have been and will continue to be a source of great comfort to me in the difficult days ahead. 
I have always been proud that Izzy and I developed a close friendship before we became romantically involved. I was able to offer Izzy solace through our letters whilst he was in Israel when his father passed away suddenly in 1956 at an early age. Although it was very difficult for Bubby, my mother-in-law, with Mark not long after his bar mitzvah and Alan only 11, Bubby showed enormous strength and courage and insisted that Izzy not come home from Israel but go to Antwerp first to learn the diamond trade so he would be able to take over the business so he could support the family. After Izzy came home, he had to also come to Sydney for business and often came to my home for a meal. I am eternally grateful to Bubby who encouraged our relationship at a time when she needed him the most. We got engaged a year after Izzy's father passed away and married six months later. We had the suchut to have my father, Rabbi Dr. Israel Parish Zal, marry us. There was a heat wave on our wedding day, no air conditioning, and Izzy kept the guests waiting before the dinner while he had a shower. <laughs> I believe our marriage was beshert. From the very beginning, I shared Izzy quite happily with the Jewish community in Melbourne and worldwide. Not so much when the children were little, but later on I was able to accompany him on many of his journeys and I have the satisfaction of knowing that I, re I was really his Ezra Konegdo, that I was able to help him and support him. Our home was always full of overseas visitors and I feel that our children also benefited from growing up in such a stimulating environment. They also understood when one year we enlisted the help of my parents and Izzy's mother to enable Izzy and me to spend an incredible Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur in Moscow. Because of us, many refuseniks came to the Akipova synagogue which they normally never did as it was considered a KGB operation. And they all gathered around the pulpit as he spoke to them in his Tzabrachna Yiddish. As most of you know, for over 30 years, the struggle to free Soviet Jewry was at the center of all of our activities and many of the refuseniks became part of our family. This struggle culminated with the fabulous concerts in Moscow and Leningrad when leading Israeli singers Dudu Fischer and Yakoni performed. These concerts were held in honor of the opening of the Solomon Michal Center in Moscow, the first Jewish cultural center in Russia in over 70 years and in which Izzy played a pivotal role. We thought when we made Aliyah in 1999 that we would lead a fairly quiet life here. But Izzy continued to be involved in international Jewish affairs and engaged in a new life as a columnist for the Jerusalem Post and Yisrael Ayom. We had a full life here, becoming fully immersed in this country. And as Izzy said many times, it was one of the best decisions we ever made. We had the opportunity also to entertain many wonderful guests at our Shabbat table, including overseas visitors such as Australian Prime Minister John Howard and Foreign Minister Alexander Downer. We made many new friends here, including from this shul. And of course, I continued an active role in World Emuna as president with Izzy's full support. Even when Izzy had to undergo dialysis three times a week at Shari Tzedek, we tried to keep up our regular lives as much as possible. Izzy's greatest joy was spending time with his grandchildren, especially during the Chagim and when we went away on family holidays. No matter what he was doing, 
His eyes would light up whenever they came into the room. I am so glad that I had the opportunity to once more express my feelings and thank Izzy for the incredible life we had together as I held his hand in his final moments. So I view this evening as a celebration of his life, as a tribute to a really unique human being who I feel sure will be, always be cherished, not only by his family, but remembered for his contribution to Jewish life worldwide. And I feel that after leading a fulfilling life, starting in Antwerp, moving to Melbourne, and realizing his lifelong dream of living in Jerusalem, he can rest in peace knowing that his children and their families are proudly following in his footsteps. Yehi Zichro Baruch. This time's easier. Kvota Rabbanim, family and friends, that's a very hard act to follow. When my father was a columnist for the Jerusalem Post, every Arab Rosh Hashanah, he would write a column where he would deliver an overview of the threats and challenges facing Israel and the Jewish people. But he would always end up on a very positive note by stating that we are truly living in miraculous times. My father's upbringing was dominated by the two seminal events of the Holocaust, the Shoah, and the establishment of the State of Israel. And my father was a firm believer in Atchalta de Gula and Etzba Elokim. And in many ways, I think it's fair to say that my father's life of itself was also miraculous. And let me explain to you how. If we look at how the story of Purim is told through Megillat Esther, we never ever see the mention of God's name. However, through every peric, through every twist and turn of the story, we always felt his presence. And I believe, in the benefit of hindsight, and it's probably something that no biographer or obituary would state, I believe in many ways HaKadosh Baruch Hu had a special prominent role in line for my father during his life. Let's start when he was a youngster back in Belgium and it's 1939 and his father, who I named after the late Abraham Shmuel Zal, he was in Singapore doing Shaira with diamonds. And what happens? He caught malaria and they send him to Australia. Fate, coincidence, you tell me. But that is how my family ended up in Australia by sheer fate of circumstances and luck. And what did that mean? It meant that my father effectively had an upbringing where he acquired two key traits of an Australian. He was part larrikin. He could be irreverent, and he had a disdain for authority. But he was also the quintessential Aussie battler, never frightened to take on a challenge, no matter what the odds. And this was coupled with his strong religious Zionistic background, which made him into a unique person, because unlike many Jews who grew up in the diaspora, he grew up as a proud Jew, always prepared to defend his turf. Now let's go back to coincidences. In 1957, he goes to Israel to do a master's, which usually takes two years. And tragically, his father passed away and he came back to Australia. So instead of perhaps following a dream of being in the foreign diplomatic service, he ended up having to go back, go into business, support the family, and 
He started to take on other communal roles. Then two years later, what happens? Plucked from obscurity, for some reason, the Mossad, the Lishkar, identified my father as one of three potential leaders at the young age of 25 to be the, one of the spear, inaugural spearheads of the movement for Soviet Jewry. In 1959, many years before it became a cause celebre in the Jewish and general world. Then, let's talk about another circumstance of fate. What possessed my father, who was a diamanteur, to go into the travel business? You cannot find two diametrically opposed businesses, but for some reason, my father agreed to get involved. And then, two years later, he committed commercial insanity. He took on the national carrier of Australia, Qantas, and he won. Now, I can go on and on and on and talking about how all these things culminated and made my father who the person he was. But in reality, there is one key event that we go back to which really shaped who he was. And if you recall when I said that had my father stayed in Israel for two years to do his, PA, to do his masters, he would not have come back home and he, would not have had the, he may not have had the schut of really igniting his friendship and his romance with my mother. And it is fair to say, and I believe this truly, that without my mother's support and commitment, love, sharing of values and embracing everything he did, my father would never have succeeded in achieving what he did throughout his life as he did. And I think there's something else that we can say and you know, as we now approach from the Schleuschen for my father, and I know all of us have had a chance to reflect and to think, and our thoughts, you know, are heavy with so much meaning as to what Dad meant to us. But I think as a family, we are learning to grieve, but to grieve with pride. And the last thing I want to say is that my dad as Mum said, he would be comforted by knowing that his children and grandchildren hopefully will follow in his footsteps. I want to go once a few steps further. I think that our father has inspired us that we will want to build on his legacy, on the one hand, but more importantly, what Dad would really want the most comfort of is that, Mum, you are surrounded by your siblings, your grandchildren, great-grandchildren, who love you dearly, and the same way as it's you and Dad looked after our grandmothers in their later years, you can be rest assured that we, your children and grandchildren, are going to be there with you for many, many, many more years to come. I'd made of the S-Room to give you the support, the love, and to hopefully share in good things in times to come. Now it's my pleasure to uh, invite Professor Erwin Kotler former Canadian Justice Minister, a fellow advocate on behalf of uh, World Jury, and also a close family friend to address us. Kvod harav, nomi mishpachad Libler, chers amis, tired of Frank, friends. I begin these greetings in French and Yiddish because these were the first two languages that fact is he spoke. And I know that Nomi mentioned it was a Tzabrachana Yiddish. I also speak a Tzabrachana Litvish Yiddish. But these were the language which reflected also uh, the background and the upgrade and the home. And it was a multilingual frequency that underpinned his unique capacity for engagement, for friendship, for diplomacy, and achievement. I'm very honored, indeed humbled, to have the privilege of sharing some words and reflections to you about a remarkable man, a man who is a Ben Bayit <coughs> at this Bet Knesset, an extraordinary individual, Ish Mishpacha, a person of extraordinary courage 
and commitment and compassion and care, whose words and deeds, as I wrote in praise of the book Lone Wolf, the excellent book by Suzanne Rutland, have had a transformative impact on Jewish history and on world history, and have had a transformative impact on our lives here, even when we may not fully be able to appreciate it. Indeed, today, as we have been experiencing the rocket attacks on Yerushalayim, on Ashkelon, Ashdod, and beyond, which included shrapnel from a rocket attack right outside the emergency hospital in Ashkelon, I thought of Izzy Liebler. I thought of the lone voice who would be speaking truth to power and holding the international community to account. But Izzy's words and deeds not only had a transformative impact on Jewish history and on world history, his own life, his own life was a looking glass into that Jewish history and world history. Izzy was born in 19. 34 in Antwerp, Belgium, which he described as the coming together of Jews of Eastern and Western origins and growing up thereby in the religious Zionism that was central to Antwerp and to Belgium. And where his mother, Rachel, had the prescient appreciation that the time had come to leave Europe for Australia. And so they set sail on the la one of the last boats to leave Europe for Australia on June 13th, 1989, from Europe to Australia. Th sorry, th th 39. I have 89 in my mind for another reason. In 1942, when Izzy was eight years old, he wrote in what Suzanne calls a rudimentary Hebrew, but a remarkable letter to his <clears throat> mother's parents in Antwerp. As Suzanne describes it in her book, he told them about his schoolwork, about learning Hebrew after school, about the Manishtana that he had recited at the Passover Seder. By then, his maternal grandparents, together with most of the Ackerman family, had been deported to Auschwitz, and indeed believed to have been murdered in Auschwitz on Simchas Torah in 1942. The letter he wrote was returned to Australia. Indeed, his grandparents, as Sudan writes, had already been deported to Auschwitz when he wrote the letter. This experience, and Izzy and I discussed it, had had a profound impact on him. In other words, he understood, as we discussed so many times, that Auschwitz was a paradigm for radical evil, as anti-Semitism was a paradigm for radical hate. And where, therefore, Holocaust remembrance and combating anti-Semitism became intertwined with Izzy's upbringing. And his mother observed the yard site of his parents on Simchat Torah. And Izzy would respond to the targeting and taunting of his non-Jewish <coughs> students, fellow students, not with cowardice or silence, but he would respond to the bullying by taking them on and putting an end to that cowering or attempting to silence other <laughs> Jewish students. So he not only protected them, but at the same time, he protected, as he understood so well, the dignity of what it meant to be Jewish. And yet another revealing and remarkable reflection of Izzy's learning and resilience finds expression in his bar mitzvah speech. Again, it's summarized by Suzanne in, in the book, and it was devoted to the significance of uh, Noah, which was his bar mitzvah, etc. I'm 
I'd like to take a moment just to read an excerpt from it. I found this so remarkable, how Izzy was speaking about this on his, in his bar mitzvah speech, doing so several months, you have to understand, before the creation of the state. And just listen to the words of a 13-year-old at the time. And it reminded in some of the things said before us this evening. I quote, we who are here tonight have been spared by God just like Noah and his family, but we must always remember the lessons that Noah had to learn. We who are permitted to live in such good and happy circumstances must remember our brothers and sisters who have managed to survive and need our assistance and support, and we must do our utmost to help them. And then the key words again. But above all, we must, we must work and toil for Eretz Yisrael. We Jews who have suffered in the diaspora must obtain our rightful place among the nations. This place, as we all know, is Eretz Yisrael, the home of our past splendors and the land promised to us by the Almighty. The nations of the earth are beginning to learn that we must and that we shall return there. But we must prepare ourselves as an Am Tzedek, as a righteous people in the eyes of the Almighty. With God's help, we shall return to Eretz Yisrael accompanied by our Torah, our beacon of light, which has always guided us throughout the Galut in the diaspora. I found that a remarkable, a remarkable, not just statement, but a remarkable understanding and commitment of a 13-year-old at his uh, bar mitzvah. This formative childhood experience not only reflected and underpinned his learning and commitment, he went on to become a leader of Madrich and B'nai Akiva, as he went on to become the head of the Melbourne Union of Jewish Students, went on to become the head of the National Union of Jewish Students in Australia, which led also uh, to the relationship that began as a friendship uh, with Naomi uh, and the connections between them. And I found it interesting that it was Naomi who actually visited Israel before uh, Izzy had, and wrote to him from Israel that she would like someday to end up living in Israel, uh, which in, in fact emerged uh, when they came their family and Aliyah. But these childhood experiences inspired and underpinned, and I'm going to move just to close, the major contributions that Izzy made, as I said, to Jewish and world history, the most important of which was his unique, and I have to say, as somebody who observed it, who participated modestly in, in his historical leadership in the struggle for Soviet Jewry. And that struggle was perhaps the most important revolutionary movement in the second half of the 20th century, which ended up impacting not only on Soviet Jews, on Israel and the Jewish people, but as Izzy understood so well and chronicled so well, impacted also on the Soviet Union, on East-West relations, on world history itself. Indeed, the struggle for Soviet Jewry, as Izzy put it, was bound up with, intersected with, five other struggles in words, as he put it, the struggle of Soviet Jews, the struggle for Soviet Jews by those who were initially the Jews of silence in the diaspora, who were awakened by Izzy Liebler, the struggle for human rights, the impact on Israel and the impact on the world. Futsak Tana Shinta Atolam, a small group transformed the universe and they were led by Izzy Liebler. A second historical contribution, just in a very few words by Izzy, but really the, on this too, one uh, can continue to write about was his pivotal and timely contribution to the establishment of diplomatic relations between Israel and India, and Israel and China, and those relations opening up the whole corridors for Israel's relationship with the Asia Pacific. The third was his transformative impact on Jewish leadership. Not only in Australia, where he served four terms as the national leader, the Executive Council of Australian Jewry, somebody who served 
one term as president of the Canadian Jewish Congress and knew what that meant. Izzy served and was re-elected four times. But not only that, his leadership not only was transformative for Australian Jewry, it was transformative in world Jewry in his reform with respect to the World Jewish Congress and the Conference of Material Claims against uh, Germany, where, in effect, he preserved the integrity of Jewish leadership for the integrity of Holocaust memory and Holocaust justice. Fourth was his unrelenting struggle against anti-Semitism, old and new. And he understood it as nobody else, both in its classic form and its new form. And the enduring truth, as he would put it, that Jews were murdered in Auschwitz because of anti-Semitism. But anti-Semitism did not die at Auschwitz. And it remains the bloodied canary in the mine shaft of global evil today. And finally, together with Naomi, their important, and I would call it historic aliyah uh, to Israel, where his lone and compelling voice found expression in his weekly columns in the Jerusalem Post properly characterized, candidly speaking, in his uh, columns in Yisrael uh, Hayom, in his public appearances, his media appearances, his engagement and the like with Israeli society and the Israeli uh, people. But may I close with perhaps what I regard as the most important and enduring legacy of Izzy and Naomi Lee Liger, and that is their Jewish family values. Hamishpacha v'archim arche hamishpacha, which found expression in kibud horim. Judge Eliakim Rubenstein in his foreword to the book Lone Voice speaks about how heartwarming it was to see Izzy's mother and Naomi's mother and Ariel and I would witness as well, to see them in their advanced age <coughs> along uh, with the Mishpacha, coming together for Shabbat, coming together uh, for Chagim. And along with this was their Hachnasat Orchim. You know, I used to think of, of Izzy and, and Naomi as Abraham and Sarah, the manner in which they gathered people together, not only on Shabbat and Chagim, but between them for uh, a, a siach amiti, for a real authentic uh, discourse of Izzy as ish hasefer, for am hasefer, for the people of the book. His library was so incredible, uh, and it has been dedicated and given to Bar Ilan University, but it personifies mishpachat hasefer. This was a family of the people uh, of the book, and perhaps most important was the erech mishpachti, the family values, and that found expression in Izzy's relationship to his wife, as has been mentioned, is Ezer Kenegdo, uh, who herself, Nomi, was a great and inspirational leader for world emunah, who inspired Jews not only in Israel, but internationally, and including Canada, and, and the like. And where the Archea Mishpacha, these Jewish values, were not only passed on to the children, but the last testament to, uh, of Izzy and Nomi to their children was, and the best expression of that testament, was the fact that they made Aliyah. As Izzy put it, and I close with the words that he stated on the occasion of his 80th birthday, when the family came together uh, grandchildren, great grand, and I, I found this so profoundly moving, and I think there is in these words a kind of a legacy for all of us, and why the rabbi said he is up there as a melitz yosher uh, for us, and the words were as follows, and I quote, I look at my family. That, to me, is the ultimate achievement of my life. Our children and grandchildren are ultimately going to be our shorashim, our roots for the future. Yehi zichro baruch. Dear Naomi, Romy, Tamar, Gary and Jonathan, family and friends. Our late father, Avram Shmuel, was head of the Melbourne Jewish community already in the mid-50s. 
And I remember that our Shabbat table was filled with interesting guests from near and afar. Already then, Izzy was at the very center of any heated discussion or debate. I also remember his early passion for books. One Pesach Seder, he kept the whole family up to Umar Shachrit until our father considered his Afikoman demand for a very, really, very expensive set of books. Being three very boisterous brothers, we were always arguing over something, and it was natural for us to throw a few punches at each other. Being the youngest, Mark often tried to bash me up, and then Izzy would always come down to my defence and bash Mark. And so, we, so it went on in, a, in this circular fashion, but they were very happy days, happy memories. Our lives changed dramatically upon the premature death of our father in 1957, when Mark and I were 13 and 11 years old. Izzy came back from Europe and Israel to assist our mother, Rachel Zichon Levracha, joined the family business and provided much necessary support. He became almost like a father to me, as well as being a much older brother. I owe him, as well as Naomi, an immense debt of gratitude for helping, me, helping our mother keep me on the tracks in school. As I became more involved in Benia Kiva, the Mizrahi organization in Melbourne, and finally in student life at Melbourne University, he became more of a purely older brother. I remember Izzy coming to Melbourne University during the mid-late 60s to give lectures on Israel and Russian Jewry to packed theatres. He helped me organise the first ever student demonstrations outside the Russian Embassy in Canberra in 1966 and again in 1967. After university, I decided to travel and work. I was warmly welcomed by owners of some of the world's most of largest diamond companies in Israel and elsewhere who had not all known and worked with Izzy. Shortly upon my return to Melbourne, one day Izzy walked into my office, handed me all the diamond stocks and said to me, Alan, for the time being, it's your baby. You handle it. I'm having a war with all the international airlines over my travel business. I was staggered, but that was Izzy. If he trusted you, he went all the way with you. Sure, I made mistakes, but he backed me up all the way. In addition to using his huge travel business in his dealings with the communist governments, is he also used our family diamond connections in similar situations. I travelled extensively, and occasionally our paths would cross in the east. I remember sitting in an office with Izzy just, just after completing a major transaction, and the next moment I hear the office secretary arranging appointments with Izzy with very senior government officers, officials of that country regarding future relations with Israel. Yet despite his commitments, Izzy found time to fly to Toronto for one day for my marriage to Mary. As his children so eloquently expressed at, at the Levaya, for Izzy, when it came to family matters, everything else stopped. We will always remember the love and respect he showered upon our late mother and her some Porish in the later years. My children had the sort of being exposed to Izzy, his personal warmth, love of family and Yiddishkeit. I hope that they will pass on to their children some of the outstanding attributes of, this most, of their most wonderful, loving uncle. Izzy never had the luxury of his shiver education, yet he was the classic modern Dati Lumi Jew, having great respect for the importance of Jewish tradition, education, and continuity. Along the line, he himself quoted many times the Shvil Hazahav. We three brothers had held, held almost identical attitudes towards Jewish values in Eretz Israel. Despite some disagreements, we never had any fundamental ideological differences. And I would attribute much of this to the manner in which Izzy and our mother had interacted with us throughout our lives. Izzy was a person of boundless energy, committed to the welfare of Jews everywhere, and very generous in his donations to Jewish schools, institutions, and needy individuals. Widespread tribute has been offered in many places around the world about Izzy. But to me, he was and always be my beloved brother, Izzy. Izzy Baruch. I will be reading out the words of my father, Mark, is his brother, uh, who is in Australia and unfortunately can't be here. Uh, so you don't have to look, just listen, and I'll do my best to channel my father's voice. 
I am deeply saddened that corona restrictions make it impossible for me to be there with you for Izzy's Shloshin. Back here in Australia, I find myself surrounded by the places where Izzy and I and Alan spent our childhoods and much of our adult lives together. I sit in my seat in shul next to Izzy's old seat and I can almost relive our hushed conversations and laughter under the rabbi's stern gaze. I look out of my kitchen window at what used to be Izzy and Naomi's house right next door and remember the free flow of children back and forth. Izzy sneaking over to have an occasional cigarette, Sunday barbecues by the pool, always surrounded by family. I drive past Izzy's old office on my way to work every day, and I recall our l'chaims in the late afternoons as we waged legal battles together for Jet Set, worked on communal campaigns and Jewish day school issues, or sometimes for no reason at all. Perhaps most poignantly, I pass by our mother's old house several times every day. This is the house where we grew up, shared in each other's triumphs, where we spent almost every Shabbat and Yom Tov together, where we had our Sedarim on Pesach, and where we all broke our fast together after Yom Kippur. My eyes only see the brick facade facing Balaclava Road. But my mind's eye looks deeper into the house and sees an array of moving images. Rosanna and Naomi becoming best friends, our children playing and becoming inseparable, all of us celebrating the miracles of Israel over the years, the local communal achievements and challenges, and of course, all of the family milestones. And whilst I draw comfort and inspiration from all these memories, I miss my brother deeply. Much has been said about Izzy's courageous and relentless battles on behalf of the Jewish people on so many fronts. And I have described Izzy as the gold standard of global Jewish leadership. I will have the privilege of saying more about this at the launch of Izzy's biography in Australia later this month. But for today, I want to focus on Izzy's top priority, family and family values. Because in this realm also, Izzy was the gold standard right from the outset. In the 1940s and 50s when our parents traveled overseas, Izzy always made sure that Alan and I were well cared for. When our father passed away, Izzy didn't think twice about abandoning his lifelong dream of living in Israel, instead returning to Melbourne to run the family business and help our mother. And later, when our mother made Aliyah, Izzy and Naomi provided for her every need and gave meaning and quality to her last 15, 20 years in the most inspiring display of Kibbud Avayim. And Izzy's sense of family always encompassed the broader family, including especially my children and grandchildren living in Israel, as well as those who visited. Izzy's recently published biography brings to life the amazing story of Izzy's life and accomplishments, and I'm so happy he was able to see it launched. But you should all know that Izzy didn't really care how many people bought the book. Because for Izzy, the book was a tool to pursue his family goals. He wanted a record of his life to inspire and encourage his children, grandchildren, and subsequent generations. And indeed, each of Izzy's children is a role model particularly in the way they exemplify Kibbut Avayim. Our dear Naomi, you are a true Eshet Chayil and a towering role model of strength, compassion, and righteousness. Rosanna and I are here for you from afar, and together we will cherish the memories and Izzy's incredible life and legacy. We wish you Arichut Yamim. I am speaking on behalf of my siblings, Liora, Adina, and Eitan, who loved Papa D microphone. <laughs> I am speaking on behalf of my siblings, Liora, Adina, and Eitan, who loved Papa deeply. We were Papa's first grandchildren, 
and we are fortunate enough to have memories of him from way back when he was a relatively young grandfather in his 40s and 50s. By any yardstick, Papa was certainly not the typical grandfather. So much has been said and written about Papa's achievements, Australian and international. In the Jewish world as a leader in the campaign for the release of Soviet Jewry, his successes in the business world, and later in his public career when he led the fight against corruption in the World Jewish Congress, and for justice to be brought to light. Papa has shown us example, by example the meaning of resoluteness and tenacity in the face of life's challenges, and above all, always pushing through in a positive and optimistic spirit. Apart from the immense public personality, was a man to whom family was above everything, and it gave Papa the most enjoyment when we were all together. Starting in Melbourne, when we lived literally around the corner, we were in and out of Safta and Papa's house. We treasure the family memories and fun experience around the Shabbat table together at 116 Kuyong Road. Almost always surrounded by Granny, Grandpa and Bubby, whose warmth and personalities we feel to this day. And none of us will forget the crazy stuff Papa would get up to as he played with us around the pool on those many summer Sundays we had together in the early years of our childhood before we left Australia to make Aliyah. And even then, despite the fact that we lived in different cities, our time together was always quality time, which I appreciate even more so recently when coming in with my daughters. For despite Papa's illness, when I came in with the Elden to visit, his eyes would light up. He had so much enjoyment from those visits. She still asks me to call Safta, Yeomi and Papa on video call. We, the family, are privileged in that we have received a Moreshet which encompasses the ideology of Torah and Derech Eretz, tireless work for Jewish causes throughout Papa's life, internationally and locally, the strength, the centrality of love of Israel, something we tend to take for granted. Papa and Safta made Aliyah over 20 years ago, and now all their children live in Israel. That is an extraordinary achievement for all of our family. We grandchildren feel fully integrated in all aspects of Israeli society, something Papa was very proud of. The kibbutz Avaim Papa and Safta showed to Babi and Granny was extraordinary and an incredible dugma yishit to the children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. What an amazing legacy which is being passed down from generation to generation. Papa fought so many battles and did so much good. Now it is his time to follow the angels and find his deserved rest and peace in Gan Eden. Less than two months ago, I had the privilege to speak at the launch of the biography of Papa. We all knew Papa was not well, but we were all on such a high after the launch. None of us believed that so soon after, he would no longer be with us. Papa was a very proud man, but also a fighter. He would never let on if he was in difficulty or in pain. He participated at the book launch, showing all of us his typical passion, his strength of character, and his amazing charisma as he spoke. The only sign of any illness was that he was connected to oxygen. But as he watched him being interviewed, his force of personality just shone through. No one who participated at the launch would know that he was facing significant challenges just to participate. That was Papa, the fighter and the optimist, who always made the best out of every situation and always had a positive outlook. Since he passed, he has been described as larger than life. And I think that really sums him up. His presence was enormous. When he spoke about issues he cared about, you could feel the passion and be swept up by it. I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to participate in that night and speak to Papa and convey to him how we the grandchildren felt about him. Because for me, and I imagine all the grandchildren, despite all his incredible achievements, which I do not believe any of us here tonight can fully appreciate or understand, he was our Papa. And that to me is one of his greatest strengths. Despite all that he was involved in, he was our fun and loving grandfather. We never had any doubt that family was his number one priority. During the shiva, the grandchildren sat down, all sharing our funny stories about Papa and the crazy things he would do to make us laugh. This is the side of Papa that may surprise many of those involved in all of his public activities. In fact, he always stressed to us the importance of family setting aside his great sense of personal satisfaction and achievement upon seeing the realization of all his efforts in the liberation of Soviet Jewry. When describing the highlights of his life, 
Papa would not refer to his great political achievements, but always refer to family smachot. As far as we were concerned, we were his priority. Papa's commitment to us was absolute. We felt it at all times. Sometimes we may have even taken it for granted. He wanted to know everything about us, was there to give advice, direction, and encouragement. We can solely have no greater role model or inspiration. He devoted his life to Kla Yisrael. He was a person of honesty and integrity, and he set the foundations in the family for all of us to follow in his path of Torahim Derech Eretz, Torahim Adam. I pray that I, and one day my children, and their children, follow in Papa's footsteps and make him proud. Papa and Safta also showed us the true meaning of Kibbut Avraim. I have seen how my parents have certainly followed in their path, and I am very grateful for how close all of us were to Papa and Safta, and the precious time we got to spend together. The special bond we shared is unique and not something that can be taken for granted. Personally, I feel especially privileged that over the last few years, during my time with Shan Shirut Lomi in Jerusalem, I was able to spend many hours talking with Safta and Papa about almost anything. At the book launch, I quoted the words of Papa and our family's Mechot from Sefo Mishle. His focus was the beginning of the Pasuk. The crown of the elders is their grandchildren. I take a lot of pride and comfort knowing that Papa had Nachat and that Safta continues to have Nachat, surrounded by grandchildren in Israel, following their example and trying to emulate all that we have learned from both Papa and Safta. But as I said, for us, the most important part of the Tzpasuk is Tiferet Benim Avotam. Papa, together with Safta, was a Tiferet for us. It is Papa and Safta who enriched our lives, charted the path for our future, and none of us could be more proud. I will miss my chats with Papa. It is a void that cannot be filled, but as difficult as the last few weeks have been, I take comfort in knowing what a full, wonderful, and meaningful life Papa led. Yisa Say everything that's written here. Okay. Good evening. Before we learn together the last Mishnah of the Shas and do assume in honor of Papa, I would like to say a few words on behalf of my family and in particular Nitan, Oriel, Avital, Michal, and Yael. When I was young, certainly younger than I am today, I wasn't aware of Papa's achievements, his accomplishments, or struggles. I think I can say that my siblings felt the same. As a child, I didn't know Izzy Libla, the fighting leader. I knew Papa, my grandfather who added funny noises at, during Zmiro Shabbat. Papa who was willing to sit patiently as his grandchildren wrapped him up in toilet paper on Purim. Beyond the many fun and happy memories that I can recall of from over the years, Papa was, a, Papa was part of all of my major milestones in life. From being my, the sandak at my Brit, for he was with me at the Kotel when I put on my tefillin the first time. And only a year and a half ago, we were dancing together at my wedding. Over the years, I had many discussions with Papa about his past. I heard stories from him and from others about, all the, about his remarkable life. In the past month, I have learned even more just how special Papa was. What a schut, a real privilege I have to be his grandson. But I must say, I knew Papa in a more complete way than all the other articles and books that have come out. A complete picture of Papa that only his family knew. I believe that knowing the fun Papa before knowing Izzy Liebler allowed me to see Papa's true greatness. He was a man of ambition, courage, and strength, yet beyond the Jewish leader was a happy, joyful family man and a loving husband with a cheeky grin who would have to beg Safta to give him a bigger size of cake for dessert. There are many things that I've learned. In particular, I watched how Papa and Safta took care of Bobby and Granny, and showed the highest level of Kibbut Avayim. During the past month since Papa passed away, we have learned together the Shas Mishnah Lelu Nishmato. We will briefly learn the last Mishnah before saying that one. The Mishnah in Masechet Oktzin, Perek Gimel, Mishnah Yud Bet. I'm going to say the Mishnah and I'll explain it later. Amar Rabbi Yushua ben Levi, Atid HaKadosh Baruch Hu ulanchi lekol tzadik vetzadik 310 ulamot, shenemar lanchi lo eva yesh, veotzrotehem emale. 
אמר רבי יהושע בן חלפתא, אין לך כלי שהוא מחזיק ברכה אלא השלום. שנאמר, השם עוז לעמו ייתן, השם יברך את עמו בשלום. רבי יהודה הנשיא, chooses to end the shots with the pasuk that we all know, השם עוז לעמו ייתן, השם יברך את עמו בשלום. השם will give strength to his people, השם will bless his people with peace. The two key words, שלום and עוז, are equally important. We need to be precise with the words, השם עוז לעמו ייתן, and see that עוז, courage and strength, is something that is given to us. We are given the ability to stand up for what we believe in. On the other hand, שלום isn't something we can do or take. השם יברך את עמו בשלום. שלום is a blessing from השם. He has given us the ability to make the world better. We have been given עוז to fight for what is right and true. The blessing of peace is bestowed upon Am Yisrael from above, at the point where he cannot do any more. The finishing act is always from Hashem. We requ require Hashem to complete our work and efforts, and only then we can reach Shalom. The link between this Pasuk and Papa is deeper than the obvious similarity between Oz and Uziel. In my eyes, Papa's life was an authentic impl implementation of this idea. Papa was a true expression of Jewish Oz, fighting for Am Yisrael's rights and values. The second part of the Pasuk, the Birkat Shalom, can also be found in Papa's blessed life. Making Aliyah to Yerushalayim and having all of his children and most of his grandchildren and great-grandchildren live in Eretz Yisrael, continuing his legacy. But more so, Papa knew how to balance a life of endless struggle and ambitious missions with a peaceful, joyful, joyful appreciation of the bracha in his life. A balance of Oz Shalom. I remember a few years ago, during Lela Seder, as we got to Ve'ish Amda, Papa stopped us, quite emotionally. He told us how lucky we are to be living in these miraculous times, how the state of Israel, with all of its flaws and weaknesses, is a dream come true to the Jewish people, something that he could have never dreamt when he was a child as he fled Antwerp just before the invasion of the Nazis. Doesn't mean we have reached perfection, he said. There is still so much more for us to do. Papa was, to me, a combination of a leader and a grandfather, a warrior and a funny storyteller, a man who stood up to the world and then jumped into the pool to play with his grandchildren. Just before I start the Adran, I would like to express on behalf of my family how much we all loved Papa, how much he will be missed, that he will always be a true role model to all of us. I would like to conclude with the blessing from Telim Kuf Kaf Chet, which I think is especially relevant tonight here in Jerusalem, as we together join Safta, Papa's family and friends. Yevarechecha Hashem Itzion, ur'e betuv Yerushalayim kol yemei chayecha, ur'e vanim levanecha, shalom al Yisrael. Papa lived a full and wonderful life, and was indeed blessed to live in Yerushalayim, surrounded by his loving children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. We will now complete the siyum. לעילו נשמתו של עוזיאל יוסף, בן אברהם שמואל ורחל ליבלר. הדרן הלך מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משניות ודרת חלן, דעתן הלך מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ודעת החלן. לא נתנשי מנח מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ולא נתנשי מנן, לא בעל מדים ולא בעל מדעתי. הדרן הלך מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ודרת חלן, דעתן הלך מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ודעתה חלן לא נתנשי מנח מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ולא נתנשי מנן לא בעל מדים ולא בעל מדעתי. הדרן הלך מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ודרה חלן דעתן הלך מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ודעתה חלן לא נתנשי מנח מסכת עוקצין וש"ס משנה ולא נתנשי מנן לא בעל מדים ולא בעל מדעתי. יהי רצון לפניך אדוני אלוהינו ולא אבותינו שתהא תורתך ומנותינו בעולם הזה ותהא עמנו לעולם הבא חנינו בר פאפה רמי בר פאפה נחמן בר פאפה חי בר פאפה אבא מרי בר פאפה, רפרם בר פאפה, רכיש בר פאפה, סוחב בר פאפה, עדה בר פאפה, דרו בר פאפה. הערב נא אדוני אלוהינו דברי תורתך בפינו ובפיות עמך בית ישראל, ונהיה כולנו אנחנו וצאצאינו, וצאצאי עמך בית ישראל, כולנו יודעי שמך ולומדי תורתך. מאויבי תחכמני מצוותיך כי לעולם היא לי, יהי לי בי תמים בחוקיך לעולם לא אבוש. לעולם לא אשכח פקודיך כי במחי איתני. ברוך אתה אדוני למדני חוקיך, אמן, 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 סלע ועד. מודים אנחנו על אח אדוני אלוהינו ולאבותינו ששמת חלקנו מיושבי בית המדרש ולא שמת חלקנו מיושבי קרנות שאנו משכימים והם משכימים אנו משכימים לדברי תורה והם משכימים לדברים בטלים אנו עמלים והם עמלים אנו עמלים ומקבלים שכר ואנו והם עמלים ואינם מקבלים שכר אנו רצים והם רצים אנו רצים לכם על המבע והם רצים לבאר שחת שנאמר ואתה עולים תורידם לבאר שחת אנשי דמים ומרמה לא יחצו ימיהם ואני אבטח בך 
יהי רצון לפניך אדוני אלוהי, כשם שעזרתן לסיים ש"ס משניות, כן תעזרני להתחיל מסכתות וספרים אחרים ולסמם ללמוד וללמד, לשמור ולעשות ולקיים את כל דברי תלמוד תורתך באהבה. וזכות כל התנאים והמוראים ותלמידי החכמים יעמוד לי ולזרעי שלא תמוש התורה מפי ומפי זרעי וזרע זרעי עוד עולם. ותתקיים בי בתלכך תנחה אותך בשוכחך תשמור עליך והקיצות ההיא תשיחך. כי הביא ירבו ימיך ויוסיף לך שנות חיים אורך ימים בימינה ובשמאלה עושר וכבוד אדוני עוז למו ייתן אדוני יברך את עמו בשלום. יתברך וישתבח ויתפח ותשומע ויתנשא ויתלע 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 ושמעי לקדושה ברוכו לילה מקרוב בחטאת שירתה שחטאת המלך מצה תמרן ואמר ויאמרו אמן על ישראל באו רבנן ואותו מלאון 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 ואותו